good Tuesday evening. Hope everybody's had a very great week week so far. And it's starting. Of course, for some people, it'll be a short week. Uh, with being Thanksgiving and uh, praise God that uh, uh, for the companies that is letting the people uh, have a long weekend. Uh, for a lot of people, it's much deserved, much desired, and hopefully they can get caught up and relax and enjoy family and tomorrow evening i'll do a, a thanksgiving teaching uh, tonight i want to look at about uh, us and so if you've got your bible once you go to ephesians chapter four and uh, and this is basically let's call it cleaning up the act from a saint to a sinner or you know from a sinner to a saint let me get I got backwards excuse me on that if you're with me in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 20 through 24 but you have not so learned Christ if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the mind, spirit of the mind, your mind. Verse 24, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, as Paul was writing, he was letting us know that we have a responsibility. It's up to us to put off the old conversation. It's up to us to transform. It's up to us to uh, to be able to put the put on the new man. And see everything about God's kingdom is opposite of the ways of this world's is. Uh, in the life of God, you first you got to die to live um, to ourselves and our desires and our flesh and live for Christ. And that's why Paul said to live is Christ, to die is gain. To receive, we must first give. And to, uh, and, and that's just like, uh, that's just opposite of the way this world wants. It wants every, everything be given to a person instead of a person first given. Uh, to bring for God to bring us in or out, He's got to first bring us in out of the shadows into the God's marvelous light. God's ways is a whole lot better than, than the way we live. And so are we living according to God's kingdom in the world's way? In Luke chapter 6, verse 37, 38, it says, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now, for some, uh, the way it is is an eye for an eye, two for two. You don't forgive, and you definitely don't forget. You always are trying to harbor hate envy and strife, grudges, and, uh, and you know, that's not God's way. Also, to help certain people, you don't do it unless you feel they deserve the help according to your likes. That is the way of the world. Yet that is not what God's word tells us and says about it. Everything that God's word teaches is at times opposite of the world's way. And uh, 
and that's why you know it's like I'll I'll use a pig as an illustration because pigs are creature habit uh, attitudes and actions that binds God and that's just like with humans their attitudes and actions that bind God's power from working fully in their life for you know it's like pig you uh, put a pig in a pig pen and what are they going to do they going to wall in the mud and uh, you can get that pig out you can clean that pig up you can put a bow on that pig and you can put lipstick on that pig and if that pig can find a pig pen that pig is going to get right back in the mud they'll squeal they'll uh, and throw a fit you try to get them out of the mud they like wallowing around in a muddy hole and they're content to stay there the slop all day of their lives and that seems like a lot of people it seems that they go around a, a vicious cycle never learning and they wonder why they're still in the same mess and it only gets worse as the years go by it's because they have stopped to think and to get in the word of god and realize that god puts responsibility on me on them on you to make adjustments in our life to start doing things god's way and uh and it's through really it's through when we have a genuine encounter with lord jesus christ uh you remember what jesus told peter in luke chapter 22 verse 31 32 he and the lord said simon simon behold satan hath desired to sift thee you as wheat but i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren well what happened three days later he denied jesus three times and uh and then it wasn't long after that um well that very day he denied and then three days later mary magdalene and mary went to the tomb and they had an encounter and they were told go back tell the disciples and peter also then what happened jesus goes back has an encounter with them, talks with them, does everything with them. and then you find in saint john chapter 21 verse 3 that peter he said uh, saith unto them the other disciples i go a fishing and they said unto him we also go with thee they went forth and entered into a ship immediately and that night they caught nothing you ever notice that when one person returns to the old ways they always will try and take other people back with them that's why uh, uh, a lot of people when they if they go back to the old ways they will try to make you feel guilty if you don't go along with them uh, that's like pig pig loves company in the mud and uh, you see this just as it was with Peter you find it going on today uh, Peter knew what he's supposed to be doing and yet instead of doing what he's supposed to be doing he went back doing what he'd always done how true is that with people today you see him turn to the lord you see uh glimmers of hope and everything going on in their life and then the next thing you know they right back out in the world doing what they used to do and and it breaks your heart you know uh, people are a creature of habit and uh, and that's what peter he was a creature of habit no different than any of us that's why sometimes it's harder for us to crucify that old man that old flesh because he'll want to rise up out of the grave he's supposed to be dead 
and yet we let them rise up in us. And sometimes we mess up, people mess up, and you know, we got to learn to forgive them. We got to learn to just move on and uh, go back. Um, have you ever wallowed in your problems or a situation all night long only to wake up the next day exhausted and not one good did it do? Uh, nothing changed the problem over you losing sleep. Uh, when if the Word of God is in operation, it's ruining you, you would have gotten a good night's sleep, a peaceful night. How many times does the Word of God tell us to fear not? Enough for every day, for each day, uh, uh, each year. And to be of good cheer and to know that He has us by His right hand of righteousness. I mean, God, if we can just grasp that, there's no problem too big, there's no problem too little, there's no problem that's insignificant. What it is, we have to learn, as it says, but you have not learned so, or, or you have not so learned Christ. In other words, when you learn Christ, you learn that it's a whole lot better to put that new man on. Your responsibility will become a whole lot easier. If when you don't, you're going to be like that pig. You're going to wallow in the mud, and it will make a mess everywhere you go. Everything you touch is going to be a mess. And as hard as you try, it's still going to be a mess. It's when you learn who you are, what you have in Christ Jesus, and learn how to take your responsibility and put on the new man. Put off the old conversation and uh, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Romans 12 tells us, be not conformed to the world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that is one of the that is one of the hardest things for people is to change their way of thinking into a God way of thinking. Uh, you know, I remember a husband and wife ministers, and um, we'd met them when we was at our home church. And so that would have been at least 30 years ago. And they were terrific. I mean, they just had a, a she would open up the service and, uh, and lay the foundation for him to come. And she, her teaching was just as good as his ministering was too and I know that they were out of the Church of God uh, association and uh, next thing I knew hadn't heard nothing from them for years and we of course we started pastoring and I thought well I was going to see if I could get a hold of them and see what they was doing and see if they might be able to do a revival for us and come to find out, I did get to speak with uh, uh, the lady, and they had went back into the trucking business that what they had done previously, and she was a matter of fact driving a truck her own self. And to make a long story short, uh, their ministry took some real hard um, bumps and bruises. Uh, people that they thought was back them did not back them. Uh, they were persecuted. They were uh, beat down, really. And I don't think that they were 
just able to ever get over the hurt. And, uh, and I had, uh, as I talked with, which probably talked uh, at least a half an hour, they were still hurt. And I would have never believed that they would have quit ministry. But they did, and went back into what they had done previously. Said to still love the Lord, but they would never minister again after what they had went through. Now, I can understand that there's things that I've went through that I wouldn't want no minister to go through. There's been things... Uh, it's just unbelievable what goes on. And a lot of ministers, I hope that they've never had to go through the persecution. And if they have, and they're still standing, praise God, thank the Lord Jesus Christ that, that they were able to just put off that old man, not go back into the to the pig pen, not get back in the swamp, but stay and put on the new man of God, and which is what Paul did, you know, to live. And that's why. Is it easy? No, it's not. Um, to be like a pig, it will take you back to the slop. It will reverse your attitude, make your habits worse than what they were before till they can get you content in staying in the pig pen. And those muddy pigs will take you back into misery, but it will make you complacent. And that's why we cannot go back into the old way. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. A new way of living. Yet how many do you see living the way that they always have? Are we supposed to be changed people. We shouldn't be like the world. We shouldn't be acting like the world. We should be a difference maker in the world. We should let our light shine instead of our light being hid. Yet, because of peer pressure, because of the pigs wanting you back in the pig pen with them. Uh, it's not easy. That's why it takes a holy cleansing to go beyond the average. That's why you don't take a, a former alcoholic and put them in a bar or to get a meal, especially if they're young in the Lord. Because that's just opening the door for them to think, well, it's okay to come back in here. And then next thing you know, they'll fall back into the old ways. We have to be as, as we have to learn that we have a responsibility plus we have accountability. Watch when somebody returns to the way it was. They will always be worse than they were at first. And Jesus related to that. He said, when the unclean spirit comes in, find where he had been, the place was swept, empty, and garnished. In other words, it had what it needed, but is empty. And he goes and finds seven more spirits that were worse than the first, and they go back and take back over. That's what happens when you get out a fellowship with Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you know, it's like our good friends, uh, of course, 
her Van Bleek, he's went to be of the Lord and Mary. When we were at our home church, they were, uh, they were a prime example of godly people. And uh, they taught us that our obligation is first to God, then to each other. And then when time comes that we make certain that we always put God first. And of course their family, a lot of uh, some, their family was from Norfolk and they'd come in and uh, they wouldn't come to church with them. But that never stopped her and Mary from coming to church. They were there every Sunday. They didn't miss Sunday school. They didn't miss the regular service. They didn't check out to go back. And matter of fact, Sunday evenings, they would be there. And they'd invite their family. And they'd tell their family, well, you're welcome to come. But we're going to church, so if you stay here, we'll be back in a little while. And that never did leave me uh, because we ended up going through a similar circumstance with, with uh, my family. And uh, they wouldn't meet on a Saturday. They wanted to meet on a Sunday. And before we ever started going to church, we always met on Saturdays at my grandpa's. And of course he had moved and uh, wasn't close by, so it would take about an hour and a half or an hour and 15 minutes to get to where he lived. And uh, so by the time we would leave church, uh, Pastor Sam, he, one of those long-winded ministers, he would go and sometimes we wouldn't get out to one o'clock or 15 after one. And so by the time we would drive at, to where my grandpa was, it'd be going on three o'clock and they were all getting ready to leave. And uh, I said, well, why, why, did, why didn't you just miss church? I said, no, we're not missing church. I said, serving Lord and, and hearing the words, extremely important. And finally they said, well, I don't know, we, we just can't come. And And so, needless to say, I asked myself, what happened to visiting on Saturdays? Well, so-and-so don't want to on Saturdays no more because they got too much to do. Well, I said, well, we'll visit Grandpa when we can, and y'all come when y'all can. And uh, I'll see you sooner or later. And... Uh, and we stayed faithful to the Lord. And to this day, we've stayed faithful to the Lord. And, and God has rewarded us. And, you know, getting people to understand, we do have that responsibility to put off the former conversation, to put off the former old man to be renewed in the mind that's our that is on us it's not on God God's not going to just sprinkle a little dust on us and say well now you're a new creature with a new feature and a new future you have to make those decisions and really they're not uh, tough decisions unless you're trying to keep one foot in the world and try to keep one foot close to the Lord. It will not work. You've got to learn it's either one way or the other. And for me, it, and it's just like Joshua said, as choose you this day whom you'll serve. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And... Uh, 
And that's, you know, that's what we do is serve the Lord. Doesn't mean we're perfect. Doesn't mean we're any better than anybody else. But when we stand before the Lord, God's going to look and he, will he say, well done, thou good and faithful servant for being obedient, for being responsible, for being accountable? Well, I believe according to the word, yes. But what if you don't? What if you're not obedient? Well, you, you, you know, everything we do as a Christian will be tried. Some of it will be burned, like stubble, wood, and hay. But some of it is going to be rewards, like silver and gold. And there's payday coming whenever we go be with the Lord. If he wraps us out here, praise God. And if he don't, we die of an old, old age of in this old flesh and go be the Lord then hopefully we'll have done everything the way God wanted it to. So my encouragement for today is, is learn of God. Learn how much he loves you. And that if you live for him, no matter what you go through, he will help you through it. We are not exempt from going through hard times. We're not exempt from going through sicknesses, trials, tests of our faith. Matter of fact, the, uh, to get right down to it, the more you try to walk with the Lord, the more your faith will be tested. The result is if you stay faithful, God will, will reward you you will be rooted, grounded, and established. And that's what the Lord is wanting his people to be. Not like the world, not go back into the pig pen, not go back into fishing for smelly fish, but doing the will of God. So I'm going in here tonight on that. And like I said, tomorrow night we're going to be... Uh, uh, about the about Thanksgiving, what we're so thankful for. And of course, every day is the day of Thanksgiving with the Lord Jesus Christ. And just hope and pray that, you know, in, in case they don't uh, see you or hear from you in between now and Thursday, hope and pray everyone has a great Thanksgiving with family, friends, whoever may come about. And that y'all can just share the what God has done in your lives for each and every one. As always, I give an opportunity right now if you've backslid on God, if you went back into the old lifestyle, right now is the time to get things right with the Lord. Because he may come back. He, he, today may be your day. may be my day. And to stand before the Lord. And so, if you do, will be well done, thy good and faithful servant, or depart from me, you workers of iniquity. We have to choose. So, that's why I'm taking this opportunity to pray the prayer of repentance, to get in right standing with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you never have, today would be your greatest day that you will ever have to get out of the pig pen and on the path of righteousness. If you backslid and you went back to the old lifestyle, let, to, let right now be the time that you also get cleansed and back on the right path, on the right path of righteousness. So let's pray this simple prayer. Father God, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I accept what you did on the cross at Calvary as for covering my sins, washing my sins away. Lord, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit that from this day forward that I can serve for you, live for you, walk with you, and talk with you. 
that I learned to renew my mind. I changed my conversation and I changed and put on the new man. And so, Lord, you just lead me, guide me, and help me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, God will help you turn your life around. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening, as always. Uh, we invite you to come join us Sunday morning at 11 10 at Mount Harvest Church. Uh, and as Pastor Randy and my wife Judy and all the members of Mountain Harvest, we hope that you have a, uh, a wonderful Thanksgiving, a great rest of the week, and come, come be part of the family come Sunday morning. May God bless you. I'll be back here tomorrow evening at 6.30. So rest in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. God bless. <laughs>